given a commitment to providing those facilities. At the present time, there is the development of a museum and art gallery building. That's on the drawing board now, and that should be completed by 1981 in April. And that is a major breakthrough. The government also committed itself to a performing arts centre, and this will make a great deal of difference. Uh, we're in a very favourable position as regards uh, arts companies coming in from overseas. Darwin is the uh, entry to Australia from Europe and we could stop people off here if we had the sorts of facilities where they could perform. We haven't had up to the present time, although we've had some very interesting performances here. Mm. Things like the Academy of St Martin in the Field, which is a prestigious London chamber orchestra, played in the Knightsbridge High School. Uh, an open air venue with no walls, a cement floor, open to the uh, elements, mm. a traffic, a major traffic highway going by, in the middle of a Mozart work, a dog rashed in and barked, <laughs> <laughs> that sort of thing. Uh, I think that a lot of international uh, performing groups have looked on Darwin as a third world situation and have been prepared to come and perform here. But we could have regular visits by people like this if we had venues to accommodate them. The typical tourist doesn't come to Darwin for Mozart, but for the flavour of Northern Territory life. And Darwin is happy enough to accommodate the tourist trade. It's the Territory's second biggest industry, and it's worth $45 million a year. The biggest industry is mining, and uranium's the most controversial. Nobody's too sure yet what it's worth. The new ground broken at Narvalek and Jabiru in 1979 for the mining of uranium was seen as a welcome development by many Territorians. Probably the majority regard it as a way of getting income and employment and a better future for their children. And they're more concerned about that than about the risks. Uranium's not just another mineral. There are risks, and the world may yet decide they're too great. It's one uncertain note in a northern Australia that otherwise seems set for great advances. I see Darwin as the gateway to Asia. I think we've neglected Asia for too long. We've been sitting here as an Anglo-Saxon Celtic Isle, and the only way we developed was where the Yorkshire ryegrass would grow, so that we could then bring the British animals out to eat it. I think that's changed now, and the northern part of this country that's been neglected for a long time, it must be neglected no longer. It must be filled, and it must be filled by Australians, and such people as we decide ought to help us fill it, and it should be done soon. The newcomer who comes to Darwin, I would like to see their continued involvement, and they certainly have contributed a lot since the cyclone, also before. And considering I only came up here for holiday 12 years ago, I've certainly had my share of uh, fun and uh, problems, but that's the sort of spirit we want, people to get involved into the community and uh, become part of it, and that's very important. We have uh, preschoolers who don't have the experience of relating to grandparents. Uh, that sort of uh, thing, I, I think, can be very limiting uh, to growing up and ordinary human experience. So I'd like to see a, a greater mix of uh, population here. I'd like the place to be attractive to older people, and older people could live here without too much financial burden or anything of that type. Uh, I'd also like to see in the urban pattern a great improvement in the, the standard of urban amenity that we have here. Well, first of all, I'd like to see it stabilised. It's been a very transient population in the past. People have come for a short time and moved on, and there are many reasons for that, but I think some very strong reasons are that there haven't been the amenities and facilities here that people could obtain for their families in other parts of Australia. Now, I think if we could provide those things, equal educational opportunities, uh, access to arts activities, which is something that I'm very interested, to all the sorts of services that people have access to in other parts of Australia, then I think people would be attracted to stay here on a permanent basis, to see this as their home. I think it's very appropriate that Darwin should be named for the author of the theory of evolution. The city itself is a classic study in evolution, from a rugged frontier town to a modern tropical capital. It's unlike other Australian capitals. It's much closer to Asia than to Canberra. 
and this is reflected in the tropical lifestyle and the multiracial population of the city. The old days when it was said that Darwin's chief export was empty beer bottles and its chief import was full public servants are gone forever. It's even changed a great deal in the last three years since I was here. Nowadays, Darwin seems to be the sort of city where any type of future is possible. And that's a prospect the citizens of Darwin face with confidence and with a quite refreshing optimism. Next week, Bill Peach looks at the past, present and future of the nation's capital, Canberra, in the final program in this series. And next on ABC Tonight, Hugh Evans and Heat 7 of Mastermind. <laughs>